a few, 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 few days later, uh, we're back at this. Probably still all in the same video, but we've got new bearings, uh, seals and bushings and things. Those are the big seals uh, that go behind this portion of the hub. Um, so yes, the gears are all used. This is a used hub setup. Uh, but we decided to get new seals because since we were here, we had to take this this far apart and we're getting ready to pull. Uh, I guess this is the top hat. Maybe this would be more of the hub and then this. There's another big cast iron piece. I don't know, there's a lot of metal here. So it's time to watch me work fast again. Pull these big suckers out. We can put the new bearings in. And uh, hopefully here shortly we have the tractor back together and ready to roll. It's work fast time. Yes. Now, when I showed off in the previous video that we had the parts axle, there was a comment about putting new seals in. And yep, we're doing all that. And unfortunately it wasn't a plug and play to take the gears out because there were two different styles. The parts axle uses a large nut to hold the hub onto the spindle piece, where the original uh, on the TW25 used eight bolts to hold everything together inside, um, and that made the ring gear different. So we couldn't just put our you know, the new to us gears into our cast hub pieces. So we're trading it all out, putting all new hubs, and all, or all new bearings and seals in the hub. This particular bearing pr proved to be a problem. See, this is where it, our eyesight wasn't very good. That bearing was being a pain, but that's because there's a wear ring for a seal underneath it that wouldn't let us access to really pry on that race. Uh, just a standard setting of a bearing. Lots of hammer tapping. Maybe I should have froze one and heated the other, but I guess that was overrated. Back to Dad. Still working away at that race. It was a real, real challenge to get that off. I was distracted working on other things, just trying to keep this project moving. But now that I've got a video of it, I didn't realize just how long it took him to get that off. <clears throat> Eva's trying to help. She's always right there. Uh, lots of grease inside. Um, I'm sure the seals were leaking a little bit on this tractor. And, you know, being in a boneyard. Boneyards probably don't get the best tractors. Chances are this thing hasn't seen a power washing either. So that was all caked good. Now, I'm curious. I'm doing a voiceover here. I had this set to music. And then got tired of listening to the music and watching... So if the music's playing, i got to pay more attention to the video to watch what's going on. But not that I don't want to pay attention, um, but I feel like a narration helps more than the music unless it's a good action scene and we're just watching tractors in the field. But for working on stuff like this, I think it helps to have a little bit of narration. So we finally got the outsides apart. The inside, there's a, there's a bushing in there, just a brass bushing. We're replacing that. That was somewhat destroyed out, just to remove it. And uh, the new bushings that went in were about a quarter inch shorter than the, I what we'll call, original equipment in, in the hub. I don't know how I feel about that, but they had the, the case of New Holland part numbers on it to fit, so that's what was available. Now, we got them through aftermarket. All the bearings and seals we went aftermarket. You know, we got Timken bearings, so we got good bearings. And the, and the seals are whatever was available. Um, but going to the dealer, that, that's suicidal anymore, unfortunately. If you just want to, you know, watch your money and you throw it at a fire, go to the dealer for parts. We unfortunately try to avoid it as much as possible. So in this moment of cleaning this up right here, we didn't see that weight ring. It's there, and I'll find it later in the video, but we destroyed one big seal not realizing <clears throat> what we had. But hey, we're more prepared for next time. I just hope there's not a next time. I'm learning lots of lessons. I just hope they never need them again fixing all this stuff. <laughs> Apparently still more dirt. Oh, yay, back to me. Parts washing. 
Yep, we left the bearings. Those gears are the outer race for the bearings inside of them, and they're just a flat roller bearing. So I washed them out good to get all the old oil and whatever schmutz might have accumulated inside, and uh, caught it caught it good. So we're looking at some of our cleaned up parts here. Uh, in between all that action there of cleaning up the other piece, I got the races in here, the bearing, the seal. We just need to put some grease on that before we assemble. I cleaned up the, I guess we'll call these the uh, kingpins, but these are from the parts axle because those have grease circs. The one that came on the TW did not. Um, and I'd like to be able to grease them. Yeah, so one thing you saw while disassembly, we had to grind off that lower bearing. It doesn't slide by hand. And then there's, it sits, the inner race sits in a lip there. So there's no way to get anything to pry. So I don't know if ZF designed that to be a hopefully not need fixing thing, but yeah, we had to cut that off. We got a new bushing in there and a new seal. We're ready for reassembly. Let's see how much we see because the camera battery is about to die and it's not even that cold. I'm just wearing lots of layers and hating the not super warmth we have today. So the factory seal on the back of this, uh, they provided a wear ring. This is the remnants of the wear ring. I didn't totally destroy it getting it off. And in the parts breakdown, they make a note that they just sell you this seal, which is what I would call a two piece. It looks like one, yes. However, there's two separate parts that will rotate independently from each other. So both sides will uh, firmly fit on metal instead of the old one where there was a more rubberized surface. This is the factory one. Now we ran into that problem because, you know, our parts axle is from a 7610. And originally the TW25 had this style seal, whatever you want to call it. I call it a two piece, which technically the way a ring would be more the proper name as a two piece for this, but whatever, we'll call it wrong. And for some reason, the 7610 had a way a ring and a soft, you know, softer rubber seal so that you could replace the wearing when you replace the seal if it wore into the wearing. And obviously this spindle piece is very expensive to replace if it gets worn in on that surface from a seal. So that's why there was a wearing. Well, now this, this style seal with our, you know, two hard surfaces that will rotate separately. I cannot do it in my hands very well, but I'm sure once it's on here, it will uh, turn okay. Now I'm you know, putting this back together is about as hard as taking it apart for getting this inner bearing on. All of this stuff on the original axle to the TW came apart relatively easy. Like I didn't have to sit there and fight the bearings too bad. I mean, they were tight, but I wasn't fighting tooth and nail to get them off. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess I probably should have heated this bearing and froze the spindle piece. Uh, but yet again, I just use creativity. And uh, made it happen. Got lucky that I didn't have the punch slip while pushing it down the rest of the way. Yeah, this is this is pretty crude looking, looking back now. You'll see it coming up. Trying to whip out the mighty block of wood and a big hammer to get this all to fit. There's that big nut right there. See, I wish it was just those eight bolts like on the original uh, hub assembly. So you just put the impact and tighten them like you're tightening it up. Uh, you know, lug nuts on a tire. Do that crisscross the circle pattern. And it would have pulled that all down real nice and easy. Just go around and give it a few ugga duggas to each one. You know, but this, <laughs> this was a fight by hand to get everything to set. Plus, at this point, I'm also pushing the seal down on so it sits. Probably still pushing the bearings. And I don't know if I was ever happy with how I set 
preset the load on the bearings other than they're tight and they're not coming off and there won't be any play for a while. At least that's the feeling I got from how I assembled it. Because if I took anything, I couldn't take anything off the nut. There's a, a lock piece that holds that big nut in place. And based on the options I had, it was either really, really tight or the nut would not do anything that could be so loose. I am hoping, slash guessing, a very educated guess, uh, that we are far enough down on. Um, it's definitely stiff. Probably a little over tight, which I can play with that. I got to the point where uh, my block and hammer was not moving this down, and I wasn't able to tighten the ring anymore. Uh, by hand so it had stopped in that regard so I think I'm down far enough on inspection of the axle there's about the right amount of play there for my pinky roughly I still think it should go on tighter but it's not going on any farther so I guess we're making an executive decision to say that we are um, on enough and we can go ahead and put this whole hub and spindle assembly on the tractor first thing though we need to put this short shaft in um, because I will not be able to get to enough stuff inside here. Here in a second. There's a little clip ring. Hopefully that never breaks because I don't know how to get that in and out of there. It's uh, it's part of you know the shaft here. And uh, we can kind of get it started. And it probably goes in. Oh, easier. Okay. Well, there. It went in easier than I thought. It just slides right in. But when I took it apart, I had to use the brake spring pliers to get in there to spread it to pull it out. But I won't have access to this once we put the whole hub assembly on.
I'd already had the fun yesterday of pulling the plug out. It takes 90 weight oil in the hubs and the front axle. We'll go ahead and change it all while we're here. And this funnel with a really long tube on it is fantastic for filling it. Each hub takes a half gallon of oil. I guess we'll test out our seal and everything. Of course, 90 weight is a somewhat thick oil. Um, are you sure you're not, it's not flowing in? Or is it just? There's a screen in the bottom. Oh, well, we will be here. It's going down. Yeah, so well, a good thing it's, it's not as cold as it could be, but I don't know if you can see it. The condensation on everything, it's raining. What a joy. Um, we, so we went from slightly cooler and it's probably warm as it's raining and everything's condensating just like we took our jug of sweet tea out of the refrigerator on a hot summer day so it'll be here a hot minute pouring it in uh, conveniently we got 98 and a five gallon jug because we have a fantastic small uh, gas station somewhat close i mean they also do tires and oils and fuel delivery but it's one of those good ho hometown locally owned places they do a little bit of everything i carry 98 oil on a five gallon bucket Well, this is a fantastic day. The TW is ready to roll out of the barn. Both front wheels are on. I think we've got enough work done to the front axle that we should be good for a while. I still need to change the differential oil, but it's together to get out enough to get out of the barn to have some space. So let's see if I can squeeze out of here. It looks big on camera until I try to drive the tractor through it.